because there was no room for them in the inn. If they only knew that was that this was our Lord and Savior who is the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, and you have no room for him in the inn, Mary gave birth in a stable, a barn. She wrapped him and laid him in a feeding trough called a manger. He was born in a manger. And there 
were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, <clears throat> keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Can you imagine angels appearing before you? <clears throat> would you be afraid the shepherds, shepherds were, or would you be ready to receive the good news? The angels said the shepherds not to fear. The angels told the shepherds not to fear. The angels came to bring good news of a great and joyful event that is meant for everyone worldwide. Who are these angels that announced the birth of Jesus? Birth to the humble shepherds who were watching over their sheep. Hmm. the shepherds precise information about our Savior's birth. Mm -hmm. They told the shepherds the time, place, who Jesus is, and where they could find him. In Luke chapter 2 verses 11, 12, it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. 
and this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This was a holy night set apart for our Savior's birth. There will not be another night like this one. This is the day people all over the world acknowledge, knows about, or someday will know about this holy night. The day that Jesus Christ was born. shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and their
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. If the angels praise God, what more shall we do? Psalms 150 says we should praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise you the Lord. Let us give glory to our God who is the highest as we sing angels we have heard on high. Shepherd's reaction was clear. They didn't want, they didn't wait and find other things to do before going to see Jesus. They didn't make excuses. They were ready to go as soon as the angels left them. Luke 2, 15 through 19. And it came to pass. As the angels were gone away from them into the heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. 
And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they had heard, it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. If you love the Lord and are faithful to him, you won't have a problem going to Bethlehem and worshiping him with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your soul. O come, all ye faithful, and sing. When we go to a football game, I either see one on the on the TV. I watched my husband uh, yesterday stand up, and he was shouting when they made a touchdown. Same thing we should do for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to give him all the praise, all the glory. We want to shout hallelujah. Amen. We want to shout amen. amen. We want to shout praise the Lord. Amen. Our God is a good God. The angels set the example on how we should... Um, unashamedly glorify and praise our God. Amen. After seeing the, the baby Jesus, the shepherds left glorifying and praising God. And the shepherds returned, Luke 2.20, uh, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Ephesians 5.18 speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with our heart to Amen. the Lord. Let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise Amen. unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. As we say, Amen. Amen. I changed the words, so follow me. <laughs> Amen, 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 come on, sing, 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 sing.
followers of God's law. They raised Jesus up according to God's law that was given to Israel in the Old Testament. The law included a circumcision ceremony, which also included the official naming of male children. Jesus, Jesus' name was no surprise to anyone. When the angel announced Jesus' upcoming birth, the news included Jesus' name. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Luke 1, 31, Isaiah 35, 5-6, and Matthew 11, 5 tells that the blind will see, the lame will walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf will hear, and the dead are Rised up, raised up, sorry. Did Mary really know she was given birth to one who will perform miracles? Mary, did you know that your baby boy? One day walk on water Mary did you know That your baby boy Save our sons and daughters Did you know That your baby boy Has come to make you new The child that you delivered Thank you. 
baby, did you know that your baby boy would one day do the nation? God for our singers this morning who let us know that our Savior birthday should be celebrated. Amen. Yes. Amen. So we praise God for them, for uh, Sister Whitehurst putting together this mini concert with the scriptures and the verses to support Amen. what we're selling about. Realizing all that we do, it's all about Christ. Amen. It's not about us, it's about Him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. For our scripture reading this morning, we're going to ask that you would stand. I'll be reading Matthew 1, verses 21 through 25. Matthew 1, verses 21 through 25. When you have it, say amen. Amen. And it reads, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all, that, all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, Amen. and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Yes. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angels of the Lord had bidden him, and he took unto him his wife. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearing and reading of his holy word. Let us bow. Eternal God, our Father, this is your word. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We ask you, O oh God, now that you open up our understanding, Father. For a true Father that you have made known through the histories. Lord, that it is all about your son today. And, Lord, and the importance of the virgin birth. Oh, God, we pray, Father, for every church doors open with every ear that is here to receive the word right now. Open our understanding that we will say, didn't our hearts burn when we heard the word of truth? And all God's people said, amen, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I chose for a subject this morning because it's all about Jesus. Amen? Yes, amen. Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the reason for the season. In as much as I enjoy all the colors, the reds, the blue, the greens, and all the songs and the, the food and the gifts and all of that makes, but sometimes I believe we get caught up into the fanfare and we forget the very person that we're supposed to be celebrating. We think it's about us, but it's about Jesus Christ. And one of the things I say here this morning as we prepare for this message that we're going to give you here is Christmas being on a Sunday only happens seven, uh, uh, every seven years. And it makes it even more exciting because he is the real reason for the season. Yes, Amen. The day when his people get together to celebrate and on, on a Sunday. 
Amen. It amazes to me because there are some that believe this day should they should stay at home and spend the time with their family. And I don't have no problem with that. But I've heard it said that it's like having a birthday party and no one showing up. Amen. Can you think about that? You're going to church and you're going to have a birthday party for you, Jesus, and people don't show up. Amen. And, and I understand I've been fanfare, but I believe we have gotten to the point that we have missed the mark. It's about him, not about us. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I know some people get offended when I say that because I, some church doors are closed this morning. Amen. I actually told people on Wednesday night when I was Bible class and I said that your church is closed. Come visit us at 239 West Washington Place. Amen. We're going to have some good singing and we'll preach and we'll let you go home. Amen. Amen. Christmas is about the doctrine of the virgin birth. Amen. The virgin birth. The subject of the virgin birth is foundational to our Christian faith. Yes. And, and I believe it should be celebrated every day of our lives. Amen. Not just on a day once a year that we celebrate yes. the virgin birth. Amen. Amen. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning in the short time that I want to have you here is who it is that we are celebrating yes. and why we should celebrate him. Yes. Yes. Amen. But one of the most insightful things that I've heard here is in Matthew's gospel. Matthew, if you're reading and you've been studying, matter of fact, this month here, I've been reading through the book of Luke. And you realize Luke had, uh, you can read all those chapters and it leads you all to from his birth to where he's at when he died. But Matthew in the book here, do something different. Even Mark, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But uh, John speaks of it a little different. But here, Matthew gives us something in this first chapter there, which was not uh, turning there. But what it tells us is here is that Jesus' birth is spanned over 42 generations before the angel even appeared to Gabriel for her special visitation to Mary. 42 generations. If you go through that genealogy, you'll find here, and I like to pause and say that there are some people that wouldn't have been in my genealogy. Amen. There were some liars in here because maybe, man, Abraham lied. You know, if you know him, Abraham was his genealogy. Then there was a, a lady named Rahab, and you know Rahab, she was a prostitute. I wouldn't have named her in my genealogy. And then you had some others in there who were just. Uh, hard-nosed people. They were people that we wouldn't have in there. But I like this because Matthew gives us a genealogy because to show us that Jesus came here just like you and I. Amen? Yes. But the thing about it, there was people in his family. Amen. And it's all for a significant role. So if you get a chance to read it, a lot of times I know when we read the Bible, we go through the genealogy and we say, Duh, uh, uh, and go by. We said he begat this and begat that there. We said it don't mean it, but it means something. Amen. So I just, I'd like to mention that, but one of the things he goes through the 42 generations, and when you get to read that, Abraham's special visitation to tell her that she was highly favored. And it's very important that meaning that it was God's choice, not hers, to be the mother of the coming Messiah. So often we get caught up and we celebrate Mary. And, and I know that she is just the mother of Jesus. But Mary called her him her Lord. Yeah. Which means that Mary was a sinner just like you and I. Amen. Come on somebody. Amen. She had to be saved just like you and I. Yes. Amen. Amen. But she was highly favored of the Lord. I mean, it was God's choice. And that she would bring forth the Messiah of, uh, of God's people and God's prophet Micah and Isaiah spoke about it. Let me just read to you what the prophets have said. Matter of fact, it tells us here in Matthew 22, it said, Now, this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, the prophets. Amen. And what did the two prophets that spoke here? The very first one was Micah and Isaiah spoke about it. I'm going to read to you Micah 5, 2 verses 5, 2 through 4, and it said, speaking to the children of Israel, way before Jesus came on the line, way before John the Baptist came in there, it was prophesied through the prophet Micah that Jesus was going to come, that God was bringing the Messiah through his people. And it says here in Micah 5 and 2, but you, O Be Be Bethlehem, Ephrathah, you are too little to be among the clan of Judah. From you shall come forth for me, one who is the ruler of Israel, whose coming forth is of old, the ancient of days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is labor has given birth. 
Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Speaking of none other than who we're celebrating birthday is Jesus Christ. And it didn't stop there. And the verse that we always see in Christmas cards and people like to quote during this time is Isaiah 7, verse 14, which we read here. And you read it along with me. And it says here, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Why is it important? Because the virgin birth. And let me say this. This is very important because I want I, I read this morning and just in my studies, I found something that I thought I wanted to bring to your attention. I read in a survey that was done in 1970 in the September 11 issue of Christian Today. They published a survey that revealed that the virgin birth is denied by 60% of the Methodists, 49% of the Presbyterians, 44% of the Epicureans, 34% of American Baptists, and 19% of American Luthers, Lutherans. And it should be assumed those numbers have not improved with the ages. Perhaps the that part of the story sounds like it's incredible for our modern mind. But even though we celebrate, there are many people today who are celebrating Christmas but don't believe in the virgin birth. Amen. And besides it, what makes it different, it does not make it. It's an important thing that we believe that, in, that Christ is God and he was present among men. Why is it necessary to believe in the virgin birth? Because if we don't, if we don't answer that question, hey, I want you to realize, because if he were born just like you and I, he would be a sinner. Amen? Amen. I, want you to see to, and I want you to see that not to believe in the virgin birth is to reject Jesus Christ as Savior Amen. and Lord. Amen. Because it is his birth, if his birth was natural, like ours, he would be sinners just like you and I, Amen. and he would not be God. Amen. Which is why it's so important that you know who it is that we're being celebrating today. In verse 1, 30, 21 of our text in Matthew 1, it says here, And she shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from his sin. And in this verse here, Matthew tells us who it is that we shall be celebrating. He shall be the what? A son. But, he, but this is not the Joseph's son. Amen. It's very important. Yes, Joseph was Mary's husband, but it was not uh, Jesus' father. Yes, sir. Amen. Why do we know that? Look what it says in Luke's gospel, Luke 1, 34 and 35. It says, and Mary said to the angel, talking about Gabriel, when he had told her, he said that, that she would bear a child. Look what she said to the angel. How will this be? See, I am a what? A virgin means that she know not a man, even though she's been espoused to Joseph. And, you know, and when you're in the Jewish culture, you be an espoused for almost a whole year. Amen. And before that marriage is consummated. And then the, he told uh, Joseph and Joseph oh, it, uh, was, was obedient because, you know, at that time if he found out his wife was pregnant before he even had consummated. He could divorce her. Yeah. Amen. But that was not the case here. And he said, and so he said, how can, she said, how can this be? Since I am a what? Right. Virgin. Talking about Mary. Yes. And the angel Gabriel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, here it is very important. Therefore, the child to be born shall be called the what? The Son of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's Mary's baby and God's son, and his name shall be called what? Jesus. Jesus is his human name, the, the human name from the Greek form of the Hebrew word, which is translated from Joshua or Joshua. But the full name means Jehovah is salvation. Remember, he said he shall save his people from his sin. We needed somebody better than us, church. The mission of Jesus is to save people from their sins. 
And I don't know about you, but minds are many. I need some help. Amen. Come on, somebody. I'm not the only one today. That for all have what? Sin and come short of the glory of God. And even if I accept Jesus Christ, I didn't stop sinning. I tried, but the body made me do things I didn't want to do. Come on. I know I'm not the only problem today. Amen. His name is Jehovah is salvation. Jesus' mission was to save his people from their sins. His name is his mission. Just to know Jesus in that verse when he says that he shall save his people. I want you to know that word save means to keep safe and sound. Amen. To rescue from danger or destruction. That is. That's what his name means, and that's why you and I are here on Christmas morning to celebrate him, because he came what? To save us from our sins. Amen. And not only save us from our sins, but keep us safe. Amen. And, and, and sound, in other words, a, mind, a clear mind. Amen? Amen? To rescue you and I from danger or destruction. Yes, so this Christmas we're here because Jesus is the reason for the season. Yes, he is. Amen? We are, we are his people and he keep us safe and sound in a world of darkness Amen. to rescue his people from the danger of sin and the devil. Yes. Amen. Amen. But his birth was not like everyone else. Amen. He was both ordinary, he had an ordinary birth, but he had an extraordinary birth because he was not, his mother was not uh, a known man. He's a son and a savior. He's a majesty, and he's a man. Yes. Amen? As Jesus, as Savior, Jesus came to set us free from our sin and deliver us from the dominion of the devil. Yes. Let me tell you somebody today that said the devil's always on my tail. Let me know. The Bible says greater is what? Yes. He that's in you than he that's in the world. I don't worry about the devil. I don't like him. He don't like me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. I want to help somebody this morning. Yes. Because Jesus is the reason for the season. He didn't stay a baby. He lived and he died. And he rose and he sat at the right hand of the Father and he's praying for me and you. And he reminds me every now and then, Terry, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. Amen. Someone has said, the reason why is that if our greatest need was for information, God would send us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would send us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God had would send us an econo economist. Yes. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would send us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness, so he sent us a savior. And his name is Jesus Christ. To save us from not some sins, but for all our sins. So when Joseph and Mary later brought Jesus to the temple... A man named Simeon came to them and said in reference to Jesus, and here's what he said in Luke 2 and 30. For my eyes have seen your salvation. And then right after uh, Simeon made that statement, Anna, who was a woman who had been married for 80-something years, her husband died after she'd been in, uh, only married a few years, and she stayed in the temple praying and fasting. And here's what she said. She spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to redemption of Israel talking about Jesus. Brothers and sisters, Jesus came for one reason and one reason only. It was to die on the cross for the sins of the whole world. Amen. I'm not going to be selfish and say it's only for me, but he said for the whole world. So if you're here watching on TV or if you're here today and you're not accepting Jesus Christ in your life, save you. I didn't know. He's the reason for the season. And the reason why he came is because you couldn't save yourself. Yes. He tells us not only because he, we, and it's very important that we understand that why he came, who he is that we're praising, but look what he says here in Philippians 2, 8 and 9, speaking about Jesus. And being found in a human form. How? Born in a manger. Born as a human. Had a human mother. As he said, bound, being found of a human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Even the death on the cross. Therefore God has what? Highly exalted him and bestowed upon him a name that is above every name. Who are we talking about? Jesus. It says, it says, it says so that at the name of what? Jesus. Come on, somebody. At the name of who? Jesus. Every knee should bow in heaven and earth and under the earth. Why? Because he is the reason for the what? 
the season. We celebrate Jesus because of who he is. Amen. Who he is. Jesus is called here Emmanuel. Look what he says in Matthew 23, verse B, in the B of verse of it. It says here, and they shall call his name, what? Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. This makes his birth different from every other birth born, birth child born in Bethlehem that year. He is God with us. And here is something that should not be forgotten by every born-again believer. Jesus is God. Yes, Amen. He was fully human by natural birth from Mary. But he was called Emmanuel because he was fully God. Because he was overshadowed, she was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. Emmanuel speaks of his incarnation of Christ, God in flesh. Amen. I don't know about you, but I get excited about that. Yes, sir. Amen. I, he's not a mystical God. He's Emmanuel, God with us. I'm not looking for him to come down. I'm not looking for him to bring him to church. He's with me. Amen. Where I go, he go. Amen. 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 How do we know that? Look what John said in John 1, 4 and, and 1 and 14. It said, and the beginning was the what? The word. And the word was what? With God. And the word was what? Was God, right? And drop to 14. 14 says here, and the word became what? Flesh and dwell among us. And we beheld the glory, the glory of the what? Holy Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Who are we talking about this morning? Jesus. Who's the reason for the season? Jesus. Amen. Jesus is God in the flesh to provide salvation for you and I. See, he, because we couldn't save ourselves. How we know for our salvation? John 3, 16 says what? For, we know, for God so what? That he what? Gave his only what? That whosoever shall not what? But have what? Everlasting life. God did not send someone to do what only he can do. We couldn't save ourselves. He robed himself in human flesh to identify with his people. The reason why he was that baby with Mary Fred, he was God in the flesh. If he wanted, he could have came with all royalty. He could have shut down everything in heaven and earth and had all the world to bow to him. Because, but no, he came in a lowly manger. There was no place for him in the end. He was around cows and sheep and donkeys. He laid in a feeding trough. To identify with you and identify with me. So the next time you think, well, you somebody, let me tell you, no. Jesus was somebody, but he came almost a nobody for you and I. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And here's what I love about him. So he can identify with his own people. Here it says here in Hebrews 4 and 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. In other words, not only was he God, but when he was here, he was uh, what? He was a high priest. Yeah. And here's a very important point about having God with us. He said, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Right. In other words, when you got with God with you, you have someone who went through it, yeah. and he made it. Amen. He said, in the world you should have tribulation, but be of good comfort because I will what? I have overcome the world. Yes, Why? Because he's the reason for the season. Amen. 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 What a wonderful truth to know that when you have Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you have God with you always. Amen. Always. Hebrews 13 and 5, it says, God said he would what? Never leave you or forsake you. In his great commission, Jesus said, behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And this is done by him giving us the Holy Spirit, his word, by his providential care and his divine presence. We have God with us. Yes, Church, that's something I believe the reason why we walk around living defeated lives. We think we're fighting this battle all along. He never told you to live it. He said, I come. He said, let not your heart be what? Trouble. You believe in God, believe also me. For in my father's house are many mansions. Yes, but I go. Come on, somebody. To prepare a place with you. For where I am, there you may be also. I love that. Him being God says, you know what? I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, but I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. For when it's time, I'm going to come and get you myself. So next person, mama or daddy or brother or sister pass away. It lets you know God came and got them. Amen. He prepared a place for them. Yes, sir. That there will he be there also. 
Amen. So God's providential care. When you're going through something, God will be with you, church. God is with you. Look what John Wesley says, and I quote, Let us praise the one who is both transcendent and yet approachable. God most high, and yet God with us. Emmanuel. Let me read that again. I love it. I love it. I love it. John Wesley said this, and I quote, Let us praise the one who is both transcendent and yet approachable. God most high, and yet God with us. His name is what? Emmanuel. Jesus, Emmanuel, is the best cure for loneliness. Yes. You sitting at home, poor me, nobody wants to be around me. If you have God with you, you're never alone. He's the answer to loneliness. Yes. Because no matter how bad things or how bad things could get, God is with you. Yes, you're never alone. Never. Praise the Lord. No. R.C. Rouse writes this and he says, Emmanuel promised to be with us daily to pardon and forgive. With us daily sanctifying and strengthening. With us daily to defend and keep. With us daily to lead and to guide. With us in sorrow and with us in joy. With us in sickness and with us in health. With us in life and with us in death. With us in time and eternity. Why? Because his name is Emmanuel. God with us. Church, Jesus is the reason for the season. Let me say this here. He is the season. My question to you, why are you here today? Are you here to celebrate him for who he is? Are you here to celebrate him for what he has done? Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you, Father, for this reason of the season. We know today is your son, Jesus Christ. We want to thank you, Father, for bringing all down 42 generations, speaking to a young 13-year-old girl, Choosing her until she is highly favored and letting her know that she will be with child. But the child will be her baby, but it will be God's son. Amen. Lord, we thank you for Joseph, Father, who being obedient to the spirit, Father, didn't put her away, Father, but waited, Father, and done what he was asked to do. So this morning, Father, we ask us, Father, we ask you to help that man, help that woman, hurt that child, Father, who don't really understand the virgin birth. Yes, we read those percentage of people who say they know Jesus Christ, but they don't believe the virgin birth. If you don't have the virgin birth, you don't have a savior. Amen. But I'm so glad Jesus is God. And because he is God, I have him in me. Everywhere I go, I have God with me. And because God is with me, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. If God be for us, who can be against us? Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So the victory is in Jesus because he is the season. Yes. So, Father, help that person today. Praise you, Jesus. If they realize and say, Lord, I've been trying to live this life for my own power, but I keep failing. You said if they confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, they believe, Father, that you died and you rose again. They ask you to come into their heart. You will be their Lord and Savior. So if you're there today, I want to pray, Father, that you would touch that, bar, that heart, Father. Bring them out of darkness into your marvelous light. And Lord, we want to give your name the praise and the glory for all that you have done. Amen. And all God's people said, amen. amen and amen. Let's give a lot of hand praise. Amen. <laughs> amen. Jesus is the reason for the season. At this time, it's time for our offering. Amen. We praise God for you. This blessed day we had. Once again, let's give a shout for those singers today who bless us with the song and the music and our musicians. Make this a very special occasion. Amen. We're going to ask a uh, deacon uh, to serve you as we have some giving music. Amen. Uh, since it's still the Christmas spirit, whatever song that you guys want to have for Deacon McMillan. Amen.
Let us bless our offering. Father, we ask you right now, Lord, we thank you that you have blessed those that had it given, those that have it now, Father. Let it be used, offer me used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, Father. And Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you would continue, Lord, to overshadow your blessings upon them. We ask these in Christ's name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you, God keep you. We want to just also let those know who are watching us this morning online that you can still give to us if you know you're not here. You can mail your offering in at P.O. Box uh, 292954, Pasadena, California, 91109-2954. Or you can use that cash app Venmo and you just put it in there, Good News Church, Pasadena. Amen. God bless you. Remember, God loves what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. Amen. So we praise God for you. We pray that you would have a blessed time in the rest of the day with your family. Celebrate because Jesus is the reason for the season. You've done the important part. Amen. You, you've already worshipped him. So all the rest of you can say that the rest of the day is mine. In the honor of Jesus, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to eat. I'm going to give gifts. I'm going to do all that. I'm going to hug people. But you started your day off right. Say amen. So let us all stand as we have our benediction song that we will sing. Let's, let's, let's sing. Can we sing just a chorus of uh, joy to the world? Sure. Joy to the world. him that is able to keep him falling and present you falling before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God I say be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. May we all sing together. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Have a Merry Christmas and enjoy your day. Ladies and man, bless you. I go find something Before you go, before you go, I have a special here. She asked me to sing a song. I want you to have, come on up here. I'm going to give her the mic. She tried to sing for us last year, so she's going to sing. We're gonna ask you, what song are you going to sing? What you want to sing? Holy Spirit. She's going to sing Holy Spirit. Go right ahead. It's all yours. Just a little bit of it. Let's try it. As the Spirit come moving over the waters, the Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit come moving over the waters, as the Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Wonderful. And Merry Christmas to you. That's the granddaughter of Deacon Macmillan. Amen. <laughs>
You've done it again, young lady. Oh, it's been a wonderful year, has it not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's your 